Alrighty, so we're now going to talk about one of my favorite challenges in game, and that is the concept of analysis paralysis. Now, that 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 two dollar words there, so to speak, but the idea of utilizing anal or talking about analysis paralysis, we're talking about the player who talks a good game about what he wants to be able to accomplish, and when he gets around to his turn, isn't certain, and he'll prevail. He'll prevail vacillate between two or more options. Well, maybe I want to do this. Maybe I want to attack with that weapon. Well, I don't know what its armor type is, so maybe I want to switch weapons. Maybe I want to run back and get behind the fighter. They've got a series of different options, and, and the way to handle analysis paralysis is instead of leaving an open table to a person that you know has this challenge, couch the answers with an either-or. Now, some players will probably respond in the chat and give me grief over suggesting that a player has to follow what the Game Master says and therefore you're railroading the player. Or, on the other hand, it'd be a situation where, pardon me, <coughs> where the options you give them aren't including the ones that they particularly wanted to pursue. And that can also be a problem. So it's um, really important to uh, think clearly about what the character is wanting to do and then couch the answer in such a fashion that you're able to give them the either or that they would be looking for. Uh, another method of handling analysis paralysis is to not give options. Simply state what's going on and then tell them which dice to roll. In many cases, a newer player, this is the right solution because they aren't yet to the point where they can put their feet down and push against the world and decide what it really means to be doing the actions or whatever. So, with that, therefore, you have to be sure again that you're isolating out the one thing that they more than likely would do. For example, if it is a situation you're turn three of a combat, the last two rounds the guy has attacked with the sword, and so this time you say, okay, go ahead and roll the attack. You don't have to ask them to, you know, describe what they're doing unless they want to. And you don't have to make a big deal out of it, but just being aware that they can make those decisions as you're doing the process or whatever makes more sense. A third way to handle analysis paralysis is to, at the beginning of the action, quantify what options are available so that there aren't any queries or equivocations based on what might be. So the, the monsters have attacked, your vanguard is already engaged, your archers are opening fire, you have the option to switch to a ranged weapon and assist the archers, or you can move into combat with the frontline fighters, or something else, what would you like to do? And give them more clear choices so that they don't have to process the infinite possibilities. Because the skill of doing infinite possibilities is a long-term effect of play. When you've played a long time, you get the idea of what you can and can't accomplish, what should or shouldn't be allowed. But when you don't have that, it's best to give them the parameters and the options in a short-form version. So with those three ways, you can uh, uh, eliminate or at least reduce the amount of analysis paralysis that cripples the game session. Because I'll be honest, analysis paralysis is probably the largest time suck in a game session. When each, each when every round, the same players are having to vacillate between one action and another, and they're not sure what they're wanting to do. You have to isolate and hold them down and make sure that they pick one of them that are available and therefore speed up the action overall.